Welcome. Today we will give you a short introduction to space syntax. This method is unique in linking spatial properties of the urban environment to social economic characteristics. From an urban point of view, space syntax consists of four things. First of all, it gives a concise definition of urban space. Secondly, it's a family of techniques for analyzing cities as the network of space. These spaces are formed by buildings, the placing of buildings, the grouping of buildings, and the orientation of buildings. Thirdly, space syntax is also a set of techniques for how you can correlate the spatial analysis with social economic data, such as movement patterns, land use, area differentiation and migration patterns, and even the social well-being and malaise. Fourthly, space syntax consists also of a set of theories about how urban space networks relate in general to social factors, economic factors and cognitive factors, which shape them and are affected by them. For example, the theory of the natural movement economic process shows how the spatial configuration influenced the flow of movement from everywhere to everywhere else and the relation with the location of economic activities like shops, restaurants, etc. In order to analyze the city, we start with actual map. You can process this map through software this software provides a set of color codes. Behind these color codes, there are hidden numbers, which represent different levels of integration. The red are the most integrated areas, and the blue the most segregated areas. So, the red one are the most accessible streets, and the blue one are the least accessible streets. What happened when the structure of the street networks change. One example to show how the actual integration affects the city is the Berlin case, before and after the Berlin Wall. From the 60s to the 80s, the city was divided by a wall. This blocked the movement routes between east to west. If you look at the map and see what happened when you remove the wall, then you will see the new center of Berlin, which is the red line, the Friedrichstraße. Now it's becoming the new high street of Berlin. You can also use this method to indicate where are the potential centers of the city. This is the case of Oslo from 99. When you run a global integration analysis, which means taking the whole city into account, then you see the outer ring road becomes the most integrated space. There you have all the car-based shopping malls. You can also run a local integration analysis and that highlights the various local centers in the city. Here you can see Oslo's three local centers popping up. You can also correlate the actual map with the dispersal of functions. You can see that the white circles, the big car-based shopping malls, follow global integration, while the other white areas, the pedestrian-based shopping areas, follow local integration. The method has been improved throughout the years, including angular weighting, metric distance and a lot of other measurements. In this map of Amsterdam, the red lines show all the local shopping streets. Interesting enough, the tram lines go right through these local streets. You can also see that the post-war urban areas, like Bijlemeer, bottom right corner, is highly segregated. The street network plays a large role in how cities transform. 
as research has shown, the street network configuration tends to steer the building density, but also the land use mix that influences how people use streets. So, the more people in streets, the higher degree of urbanity. Density, diversity and degree of street life are very strongly influenced by the street network configuration. At the moment, we are working on a theory on how do cities transform naturally. The role of functions have played a very important role on how we have planned our cities. But in order to plan more successful cities, the street network should play an important role. In the end, the functions and building density are accumulated by the street network. We have built a sufficient number of badly functioning urban areas during the last 50 years. So now it's time to learn from these areas through identification and analysis of the spatial as well as the social parameters and to apply this knowledge into urban planning practice, design guidelines, urban regeneration and architecture. Space syntax seems to contribute to a lesser matter of guesswork because through this method we can give an indication on how it would affect the social economic life of cities just through the change of integration. Here you see the case of Coventry before and after the ring road. The ring road has contributed to the segregation of the city centre contributing to social problems. So, space syntax is a very useful tool to create smart cities. First, we have to sense the city, we have to map the urban areas, and the map needs to be analyzed, and also you have to reach to the map, and you can use space syntax to test out the social economic implication of various design proposals. The main message is think space before form. How are things accessible to one another? Thank you for your attention.